assalamu alaikum dear students hope you are doing well today one of my subscriber sent me this question in the response of my previous video he asked some reasons and i would love to give the response and answer of those reasons how and why we use iterative uh the first part was simple as i explained in my previous video the equation was given and two values of x were also given and it was asked in the question verify to the do the root lies between these two values as i told you what do you do you just suppose that equation is equal to function fx you convert that equation into function form fx is equal to x cube minus x minus a and then turn by turn you take one value of x and the other value of x if both values of x gives different answer by sign one is positive and the other is negative then that verifies that ensures you have the root between these two values of x how i can show you let's say when you take x is equal to 1 and you will see by substituting that value of x is equal to 1 in this function you will have your answer minus a and same way when you use x is equal to x is equal to 2 in same function you get the answer 3 you see that if you have this function like this when x is 1 your answer was minus 3 and when you have x is equal to 2 the answer was 3 as you know this is continuous function when you plot this and this value moves from minus 3 to 2 minus 3 to 3 when you increase the value of x from 1 to 2 so by moving from minus 3 to 3 definitely you will pass through zero first you will go to 0 and then 0 to 3 so this means when you sketch this function it definitely crosses the x axis because x axis mean y is equal to 0 or fx is equal to 0 so this way one is negative and the other is positive so you need to prove only that one is negative and the other is positive if this type of the situation you have this mean your root lies between the given range this way we verify this type of question now the actual question was second part actual question was second part and i love to respond second part listen and if you listen carefully and understand this technique hopefully you will be in better position to answer the question in examination without losing any credit or mark so uh, most of the time you know he himself gives you alternative equation generated from the given equation in the part 1 and there is no worry you just verify as i told you in my previous video that x n plus 1 is equal to x and both are equal to alpha or x whatever and you plug this value of alpha or x in the equation and you simplify and after simplification you see that the result obtained is same as stated in the part 1 or original equation have but the problem here for this part he has not given you one iterative equation he has given you two iterative equation which were generated from same given equation in the part 1 these two equations are these 
And if you see them carefully, and as I told you in my previous story, if you plug X in both equations, you will see that both will converge to the same original equation. So this means I haven't discussed this situation with you. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for that. Now I'm going to explain it. I love to explain it because sometimes we are teacher is something and when you ask the questions then we can respond and we can think what is missing and what is not missing. That's why I always encourage the interaction of students. I always love to answer the questions. I always love to I always love the participation of the students. So when you respond, you ask the question, we love. Because this way you learn, we learn. And teaching is a both way. Is double implies. You learn, we learn. Now these two equations are given. Here I told you the right side of the equation. The right sides of the equation where as I told you xn is equal to gxn. Whenever we have equation, we always express xn is equal to gxn. gxn. This is basically there are many methods and in higher classes you will study many more like Newton Raphson method, Jacobi method, Falsi method. There are so many methods in computing, but this is the basically start. You know, here in both cases, this function is gx and alternative method holds true only when g of x converges. Converges mean that if you differentiate g of the function, the function on the right hand side the function on the right hand side if its derivative if its derivative is less than 1 this means this converges and if the right hand side of the function which is g of x the derivative of g of x g prime x is not less than 1 in other words greater than 1 its magnitude is greater than 1 then it it does not converge in the given domain of the x in the given domain of the x as you see in the first part g of x is equal to x cube minus a when you differentiate you get 3x square you get 3x square as you have the range of values of x 1 to 2 1 to 2 if you plug this range in the given function, it will not converge because you have your range from 1 to 2. If you increase the value of x, the answer of g prime x will increase, will increase. So it will not come towards the 0. So this means your first option is not going to converge to a single root but contrary to this if you take second option you take second option where the g of x is x plus 3's whole cube sorry x plus 3 cube root 1 over 3 1 over 3 means cube root if you differentiate that you will see that you get 1 over 3 x plus 3 is minus 2 over 3 and you will see by taking the value of x from 1 to 2 your answer will decrease why decrease because you, you see x plus 3's power is minus 2 over 3 if something has power of negative instead of it increase increasing it decreases so you will see that in the given range the second option gives you the magnitude of g prime x 
less than 1 and that ensures that the exact and the right option of these two equations is B for alternative method. Uh, Sometimes some teachers and some students like me when they are not in high temp good temperament say take x1 initial value and uh, after showing four five steps for both and will which gives us the right uh, one answer that's fine and the other one which is not uh, give giving us convergence answer is false no this is not the wise way because that will waste your time and that's not the right strategy after all passing a level you have to be in computing field mathematics field in computer sciences so learn always the right way so this way we do the question so we will uh, rule out the part a because the derivative of uh, right hand side which is g of x the answer of g prime x in the given range of x from 1 to 2 is not converging mean when g prime x is greater than 1 this means this derivative this equation is diverging and we will rule out the diverging section so this way we use the equation and we have more than of more than one option so basically that was the question and the third question is saying initial value is given 1.5 you will uh, take this x1 value 1.5 in this uh, equation in this iterative equation and then you will calculate x2 and then you will calculate uh, x3 by using x2 and same way you will calculate x4 by using x3 and the process will go on like that until and unless up to the required decimal places your answer becomes same same story as i told you x n plus 1 x n and one thing more this question is important uh, regarding reading you have to choose and be cautious uh, if he says using the iteration up to five decimal places use five decimal places if he says seven decimal places use seven decimal places and then at the end he again asks you first in the first few words he says show your iteration up to that required decimal places and at the end he says give your answer up to that decimal places the figure of decimal places for the answer and for for the working are different so be careful so this way we calculate and we do computing and uh, you haven't forgot forgotten what i state because we promote math we are promoting mathematics and we need your subscription never forget to subscribe our channel this is our request my dear students this is my request thank you god bless you thank you